What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here, bringing you another video, and today we're going to do a rad movie review, talking about another extreme horror film. Today I wanted to talk about Tokyo Gore Police. This was quite a fantastic watch in many ways. Like I said, this wasn't a great, great film, but this is one of those films, if I was to think of a list of like top 100 movies everybody should see before they die, this film would definitely be on that list. So let's get down to this review. Roll it! So Tokyo Gore Police takes place in the future in a futuristic Tokyo where we follow a policewoman that works for a privatized police force. Think of this Tokyo as it's the police are the judge, jury, and executioner. And she has to go around looking for her father's killer while there's also some mutants running around called engineers, which are quite crazy because their bodies are deformed. Like body horror is off the charts in this film. So let's just get into some positives and talking about why I wanted to put this on the extreme horror list is that mainly because there is some awesome, awesome practical effects in here and some scenes that are just like once in a lifetime scenes, like scenes that you would never think of to put to scene or to put on film in cinema. And I would feel like one thing that kind of leads into a mixed and negative or just kind of kind of go all over the place with this film is that this would be much better as an anime. So as I was watching the film, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, watching it in live action and seeing it portrayed. But I was just like constantly I was thinking like, wow, like the concept of this film the way it's executed, the tone shift and everything and what they're going for in terms of the practical effects and the way the film looks, this definitely would have been way better as an animated series or an animated film. That's not to say this is a bad film. Like I said, there is a lot of positives, like practical effects, kills are off the charts. Like for one scene to describe the practical effects, there's a woman in here that from the waist down is basically like a giant crocodile mouth. So her legs are the mouth. She has teeth on her inner thighs leading all the way to, you know what, it's, it's pretty wild. Like I said, and there's a lot of awesome practical effects and gory scenes just like that. Also, we have our lead actress who you might recognize her from the film Odd. Edition. That's a fabulous Takashi Miike film. But this film, yeah, she is the lead in this one. And she plays a policewoman looking for her father's killer. And she ends up going down this path of deceit and all kinds of stuff that she ends up finding out. And like I said, it's very gory. And in terms of other tone things, like that's one other kind of mixed and negative thing. I would say actually my biggest negative with this film is the tone shift, which you can totally get away with if you're an anime. And I tell people that all the time, that Japanese anime, the way that they're able to tap into storytelling and the way they're able to portray certain scenes on screen because of visuals because of drawings and all that kind of stuff it just has this more fantastical element to it and when you do it in here when you do it in live action and the tone shifts are so dramatic when it comes to action horror comedy i mean like we have some extremely gory gruesome scenes in here and like some gruesome scenes of brutality but then there's also very heavy comedy moments. So I would also classify this film as like a black comedy. So I think that's what the director was kind of going for and the writers because this plays off more, like said, like a black comedy, almost a satire, very similar to Starship Troopers. If you've seen Starship Troopers, this is like a Japanese version of that, but, you know, in Tokyo, in the future, dealing with mutants that you have to tackle down and hunt down as police officers. And this also has a lot to speak about right now in the time that we're in now because this is a privatized police state. So the police are the jury, judge, and executioners. And this, the way the film is tackled in terms of the writing and the way they shoot certain scenes, it's done through a very male gaze way, almost a misogynistic kind of way but then we have our lead actress who kind of cuts them down and goes through hunting people and is our protagonist in the film even becomes like a mutant herself like I said we're talking about this film this film is pretty old we are going to spoil these movies that we talk about <laughs> that I'm talking about in this extreme horror one this one's from 2008 so we will be spoiling them that's warning but yeah, she ends up joining with the engineers basically and using that power that she's been fighting and hunting throughout the entire movie to, you know, go after her father's killer. So like I said, this is definitely one of those films that I would recommend 
everybody watch before they die. Is this movie for everybody? No, it's not. Not everybody's going to enjoy this film, but the ride it takes you on is so unique, so inventive, and so different from anything that I've ever seen that I'm like, this is a must watch, even if you watch it one time. Me, I will definitely return to this film, and this is a film that I kind of, I want to own this, I want to buy this. Let's kind of get into the rad rating so I can discuss more about the film and my feelings on it, why it gets the rating it gets. I give it a 7 out of 10, mainly because conceptually, I love the concept of this film. I love the gore, the practical effects, and the setting of the movie, even the costume design. There's some really cool costume design in this movie, too. It's just the dramatic shift in tones really hurts this film a lot, and actually our lead actress, I love her in audition. In this film, I think it's just the way the character was written that she's portraying. It comes off very flat, and she's very, like, um, emotionless. You know what I mean? There are scenes where she does get to rage out and does have emotion, but just the way it's executed and portrayed, like I said, I don't know if it's the writing. My, my feeling is it feels like it was the writing and what the directors were telling her to do. Because, like I said, I've seen her in audition, and she's absolutely fantastic. So I think in this one, it's just what they were trying to get her to be on screen and portray. It came out very flat to me. Another thing with this movie is like me being someone that I can watch almost anything and I've seen very, very gruesome stuff. There are a couple scenes in here because of the tone shift and the way they handle things. There are some scenes in here that are very much like I feel like it was it was either for shock value or it was more just like, oh, did we need that? Like there's a prolonged scene of a woman who ends up getting tied to four cars two to her arms and two to her legs. You could obviously, in your mind, depict what happens after that. And it's dragged out very, very long, like almost to like eight minutes or like seven minutes. And it's just those scenes like that are the things that I'm like, did we really need it? Because I think doing the scene in general and the way that it was executed with the four men doing it, the way they were acting and what was happening... You could have got that across in just doing that scene in under two minutes or a two minute and a half type thing, you know, instead of prolonging that type of scene. And that's what I mean. There's certain stuff in this film that I just think if they would have had, they reeled it in a little bit. Like I understand they were going for, let's throw everything at the wall. Let's go crazy. Let's have mutants in here. Let's have body gore, decapitations, blood squirting everywhere. You know what I mean? Having cops that like drive these crazy cars and are dressed in these samurai suits and have these outlandish guns and everything and weapons. It's just, I understand what they were going for. That's why I say this would have landed better as an anime because in an anime you're able to push the bounds in the fantastical way and people are able to accept it easier. So thanks for sticking around with me all for this review of Tokyo Gore Police. Like I said, this is one I definitely highly recommend that you watch. I believe I streamed this on Tubi. This was on Tubi, and I believe you could actually catch this on Shudder as well. So I highly recommend checking it out. Like I said, a 7 out of 10, still a very solid rating, and I do want to pick up a physical media release of this one. So I'm going to search that out and try to find it. Please like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I drop a video, but most importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.